Let's take it to the West Coast alongside Sean Farnham. Here's Dave Fleming for a monster matchup between Gonzaga and St. Mary's. All right, we do welcome those of you just joining us from Lexington and Kentucky. A very charged atmosphere here in Moraga for a great rivalry game and an intense first minute plus Julian Strother just caps off a three-point play. So Gonzaga with a 3-2 lead and setting up a little pressure against the Gales of St. Mary's. Yeah, if you could try to speed up St. Mary's, they're so deliberate in how they play, and that's a big-time turnover. Two turnovers in a row and back-to-back possessions. Anton Watson's made two terrific defensive plays already. He's had an excellent year for the Zags. And this game always delivers. St. Mary's Gonzaga has been the rivalry for more than a decade in this conference. This year in particular, though, Zags in second place, 9 0 St. Mary's, 8 1 Gonzaga. Huge game in this conference. First of two meetings between the two teams. Through Timmy, the All American goes to work and missed the shot with his left hand. Timmy Owen, Owen two to start from the field so far, but if I'm Randy Bennett, I'm concerned about the execution at this end. You've got to be able to set up your defense, and two turnovers have allowed opportunities for Gonzaga to get to the other end of the floor. Uh, the style difference has always been a story of this rivalry. Gonzaga likes to play free and open and fast, and this year leading the country in scoring field goal shooting. St. Mary's under Randy Bennett, always one of the best defensive teams in the country. And, and this year even better. And they, the, one of the other added components for the St. Mary's team and why they're undefeated is they rebound the ball really, really well. Mitchell Saxon got the defender in the air and then lays it in. Mitchell Saxon, one of the more improved bigs in all of college basketball. He's gotten his minutes up, but his production has gone through the roof. Nolan Hickman, the young guard, tries to enter it to Timmy, who makes his move and scores his first basket of the night. Hey, Mitchell Saxon let Timmy get to that left shoulder. That was one of the things they talked about at shoot around. If you're going to wall up in body, you can't allow Timmy to turn to his left shoulder. That time he did, and Timmy was able to finish. Saxon will get another touchdown low. Aiden Mahaney, the tremendous young player for the Gales. Freshman almost turned it over. Logan Johnson finds Kyle Bowen. His three, not close. He guided that one. He didn't shoot that one with any kind of confidence. He hasn't scored in the last two games. He's been a much improved offensive. He's always been a great defensive player. He's had a really good offensive year, but he's in a funk. Hickman got rid of Mahaney and hits the step back three. Great. Job that time shifting the defensive player, getting him on ice skates, pulling it back, getting his feet set underneath him. Oh, and Hickman early on looks like he's taking this matchup with Mahaney, who's been such a great young player. Nolan's taking it personally. Saxon whips it over to Logan Johnson, a high ranking three, and that one was way off the mark. He had a rough shooting night on Thursday. Dave, that one wasn't close. That Not was close. five feet off. And it was not deflected. Was here Bolton down the lane at his shot blocked. Johnson then was fouled. So the foul against Anton Watson. Dave Mahaney, as a freshman, has made a reputation as a big shot maker. Yeah, Money Mahaney, the freshman from just down the road. This was the game winner, 0.3 seconds left to go against BYU. And then just the other night on this court, a little jab step. USF looked like they were crawling back into it, and that was the one that drove the dagger. The Gales can get bogged down at the offensive end of the floor, and Mahaney adds a little bit to that this year, which helps his team out a ton. Alex Duke is good move, but... He couldn't finish with the left hand, so now the Zags out in the open court. Julian Strother thought about the three in transition. Timmy gets to that low block, just banging against Saxon. All kinds of contact, and they finally call the foul. So that'll send us to our first time out. 8-4 Gonzaga with the Earth career 
scoring list. He's not had a great year again shooting free throws. He's worked at it. He's down to 59 percent. First one goes down. On the flip side for St. Mary's, all the adrenaline coming in. There's Drew's mom and dad. I don't spent some time with them before the game. They, it was Drew's dad's first time being here for this game. You can't miss this one. If your kid plays at Gonzaga for five years, you got to be in Moraga at least one time. I told him he should have gone over and introduced himself to the students behind us just to see what the reaction would have been. I love the fact that Mark Few is going with this extended out pressure. They've had some success disrupting St. Mary's, and you're trying to get them to play outside their comfort zone. And when we talked to Mark Few, he said it's like playing Virginia. It's really hard to disrupt them and get the game played at the pace that you want to. Yeah, I think this is a good start for the Zags. Shot clock already down under 10 with that pressure. Here's Mahaney curled into a jumper, missed his first look. Ball was batted back outside, and it's going to be St. Mary's ball. That's Mahaney's first look. Drew Timmy just five points away from moving into second. And taking over five, point, five points to pass four to tie second all time. He's going to be the all time leading scorer when it's all said and done. Mahaney, they left him open. And they got away with it. Aiden Mahaney's not going to miss that shot very often. No. And, and we've seen St. Mary's go through scoring droughts, whether it was at BYU or here the other night against USF. And when we talked to Randy Bennett, we said, how do you avoid the drought? Because if you go for a drought against the Gonzaga Bulldogs, they're going to take it to you. And he said, one of it's limiting our turnovers. Two is making sure the right guy's taking the shot. They've had some struggles with turnovers early, but that's the guy they want shooting the ball. And that's the quality of shot that they want to see to stop the 7-0 run. Malachi Smith off the bench, and he goes right down the lane and scores his first basket. Now, both these teams have struggled at times this year to get bench production. That's a good sign for Gonzaga. They've got an early eight-point lead. Gales haven't made a shot in a while until right there. Malachi Smith, you cannot, uh, you cannot allow Logan Johnson to get you going left and get back to his strong hand and get to the right. Defense! 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 Down the lane, and that one goes down. Same spot. Notice where Gonzaga's scoring their points, though. It's, 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 it's historically what they've been able to do is get a piece of the paint. Right now, St. Mary's is not guarding the lane. They're not pinching and helping and forcing Gonzaga to shoot over the top. Logan Johnson almost daring him to shoot. That one came up way short, so he's had two ugly three-point misses. Oh, and, and you have to remember, he is a lefty, so when I talk about going to a strong hand, what he loves to do is rock you to his left and then cross you over to his right to create that seam. And if you overplay his left, that's what creates that lane Malachi Smith jumped on. As, as good a year as he's had, he hasn't been a very good three-point shooter overall. But the other night, some bad misses. And at the start of this game, it's got to be a little concerning to St. Mary's. Not a real confident shooter right now. Mahaney passed up a three. In and out on the two. That's three good looks, and he's made none of them. How good has Aiden Mahaney been this year? He's like in the conversation of like a, a Bryce Sensabaugh, a, a Brandon Miller as far as averaging over 15 points and shooting better than 40% from three for most of the season. That's the bigger problem. Every possession right now, the Zags are getting in the inside of the Gales defense, and that is not easy to do. Now, that was a, a great move by Timmy to get in there and then finish. Mahaney swarmed and a call foul against Richard Bolton. Ten-point lead for the Zags. St. Mary's, you said it, that offensive funk, which tends to pop up most nights for the Gales. At some point, it's happening early. Yeah. Well, and, and when you play at their pace, a ten-point lead for your opponent sometimes can feel a little bit more. You, you haven't had to come back. You haven't been in this situation. Alex Dukas scored with the left hand. Timmy kept his dribble going as he almost fell down. Bolton right down the lane. Extra passing. 
Here's Ben Gregg, the young big man. His three is good. Well, you mentioned bench points at a premium. When you're able to get some for Gonzaga, Ben Gregg can be an energy giver. We saw it at the game at BYU. He got on the glass. He made a shot. He started being aggressive, getting offensive putbacks. Marshall Onis almost fired it out of bounds. I don't know how Kyle Bowen saved that one from being a turnover. Mahaney again gave up the jumper. Dukas three. No. Bowen offensive rebound. And he got fouled. The environment is different. This game always feels different. You have to be able to handle it. Gonzaga's seen this offensively from Gonzaga. Better coverage is needed by St. Mary's. And, and how they do that is they've got to build and you've got to help off the wing a little bit and guard at the elbows. You want to add extra support there where you can still get back to yours if they kick it. Gales ball. Out of the timeout. Mitchell Saxon. Epton Reed in off the Zags bench. Dukas missed that jumper. So some good looks for the Gale. Shots not going down. Gonzaga looking to build upon its lead. When you miss this many shots, it just puts so much more pressure on your defense. They are 4 of 13 shooting from the field so far are the St. Mary's Gales on their home court. Greg will shoot another three. That one off the mark. And they're going to call a foul against Reed for a push-off. Well, our next big Monday doubleheader starts with Duke coming off their great win earlier today at Cameron against Carolina. Going south to take on number 23, Miami. That's at 7 Eastern on Monday. And then a top 10 battle from Fog Allen. Number 10, Texas. Number 8, Kansas 9 Eastern on ESPN. Texas coming off a great road win against Kansas State. A little bit of a payback because K-State got Texas at home earlier on this season. Nice tip from Mitchell Saxon. That's their fourth offensive rebound and only their first second chance points of the evening. The Gales can really rebound the ball. They're top five in the country in rebounding percentage. Get on the offensive glass, utilize your length, and get some easy second chance points. Luke Barrett's in this game early. He didn't play a minute on Thursday when we were here. Gales outlasted the San Francisco Dons in that one. Reed makes his move with the left hand no. Well, with Drew Timmy on the bench, this is your moment. You can free yourself up a little bit defensively to stay at home to the guards on the outside. You don't have to pinch. You don't have to overhelp to the post. Augustus Marshallonis, bad pass. That's a turnover. He's been very good protecting the ball this year. That was not a real good pass. This is an interesting lineup for Mark Few because you're looking at points, and you've got Greg, and you've got Salas, and you've got Smith. Hickman's kind of got to be the guy that goes. He went, missed the shot, rebound. Saxon saved it in bounds. Well, Randy Bennett's got both Alex Dukas and Logan Johnson on the bench. Neither shooting the ball well in the early going. Mahaney, three, too strong. Bowen, high up, and Reed snatched it away. Call a foul against Bowen. Massive substitutions, almost a line shift for Mark Few with Watson, Strother, and Bolton all back into the game. Aid Mahaney comes out of the game. He's 0 for 4 at the start of this one. First rivalry game, first feeling of what it's like for the young freshman yeah. that's had a great season. Uh, but a slow start here this evening. And this is different. Hunter Salas, beautiful pull-up. You get the feeling he can get that whenever he wants. If those shots go down, he's got a whole nother level. Hunter Salas, very talented young player. Logan Johnson had some time on the bench. Bowen passed up the three. Again, he hasn't scored for two straight games. He needs to take that shot, and he needs to shoot it with confidence. All right, here one. He shoots it and hits it. And, and Randy Bennett just shook his head. We talked to him at shoot around. He goes, I can't get zero points from my starting four man in back-to-back -back games. And his first shot attempt here tonight. 
It looked like he didn't really even want to shoot it. That time, he did it with confidence, and it goes down. Wow, Bowen now, though, reaches around and commits his second personal foul. That's a big call. He is one of the great defensive players in all of college basketball. Forget about the offense. They need more offense. But now he's got two. And Josh Jefferson checks in for Bowen. But Drew Timmy closing in on number two on the Gonzaga's all-time list as he checks back into the game. Jefferson made three really big defensive plays last game. Oh, what a block from Saxon. Logan Johnson goes one-on-one, -on -one and Salas swats it away. Here's Watson at this end for the dunk. Whoa. <laughs> How about that up and down, back and forth? Here's Jefferson. Three. Good. He made some really nice plays on Thursday. He has not played big minutes. Strother got to that same spot. Gonzaga scored, what, four baskets from almost that exact same spot in this first half. And, and that's what they talked about today at Shooter They wanted to be aggressive. They wanted to turn the corner, and they've been able to do it consistently. The Gales have to make an adjustment and keep them outside the paint, at least above the logo. Double team was coming. Now a layup, no good. Logan Johnson, Watson just held his ground, and Johnson missed another one. Down low, Watson, good catch. Anton Watson scores. Whoa, what a season Anton Watson has had. Patient, waiting in his turn. Thought it was going to be last year, and then all of a sudden they, they go out and they get Chet Holmgren. He doesn't panic, doesn't hit the portal, just gets better, and he's having a sensational season. Marshall Onis goes all the way. So the game's picked up some flow for St. Mary's. Problem is, for them, the Zags' offense has been tremendous in this first half. One of the best field goal percentage defensive teams in the country, and they're allowing the Zags to shoot 61% so far here in the first half. Really impressive so far. They're going to call the foul against Logan Johnson, sort of riding along with Bolton. We've seen some great action across the country today, some big games, but how about this? A little block second with 42 meetings on that list. The 44th time, by the way, that a team has been ranked in between before with these two matchups. That's third most all time behind Coach K and Gary Williams, 49 times. Bayheim and Calhoun, 48. Actively, it's number one. Self and Scott Drew would be skipping on the list with 35, and they've done it 44. Wow. The excellence between these two coaches, the familiarity, familiarity between the two coaches, has made for some great rivalry. It makes games. it impressive to me that the Zag, they got another good look there. And whether they're doing some new stuff. Some wrinkles are just executing beautifully. They're getting a lot of good looks against St. Mary's. Saxon stayed strong with the ball and scored. Well, he's needed to play a little bit stronger with the ball. He has missed some easy ones around the basket in the last couple of games. Well, this is a game that you've got to answer, and you've got to understand it's going to be a fight from start to finish. And they've got Kyle Bowen in the game with two fouls. Randy Bennett not afraid to play a player with a couple personals in the first half. Timmy. Against Saxon, who knocked it away. Well, what it, we talked about hit that today about playing with fouls after Aiden Mahaney was in the game for about six minutes with four personal fouls late in the contest the other night. He goes, "Listen, I'm not going to lose a game because of fouls." And you know, we've got to be smart. We have to be disciplined. But you have to be able to play through fouls. And if that means you foul out of the game, well, somebody else is going to have to step up, anyways. Hickman trying to get the ball in, and he does. Timmy, help came. And then That's Logan a double Johnson. dribble. Yeah, they didn't call a double dribble. The shot missed. I, I thought that was a double dribble. He dribbled it on the catch, and then he picked it up, and then he put it down again. Freshman Aiden Mahaney back in the game. 
looking for his first shot made. Bowen, another three. That one no good. And Strother went way high for the rebound. They're going to call Saxon for the foul. And that'll be his second, which is, I mean, that's a big deal for St. Mary's. They're going to have to go bring the freshman Harry Wessels into the game and get Saxon out. Mitchell Saxon's played really well. Yeah, you want him to be aggressive, but that ball was already corralled, and there's no need to foul Julian Strother there and then give up essentially three points at this end of the floor. And free throws now. Already 17 fouls for the Gales, so one and one for Julian Strother. Had a monster game. Whew. 40. Went for 40. A little short list of Gonzaga players who've had 40 plus in a game. Strother makes the first to earn the second. We got a women's basketball triple header tomorrow on ESPN2. You got number 11 North Carolina against Louisville at noon. Undefeated LSU, Texas A&M. And it finishes off with a top 10 matchup in the Big Ten, Ohio State and Maryland. And we've seen Angel Reese for the, the season she has had for LSU. A double-double every single time she takes the floor for Kim Mulkey's team. Playing phenomenal basketball. You look at South Carolina, the season they've had a potential matchup moving ahead with LSU. That's going to be unbelievable television. Yeah, Logan Johnson, almost like he's got a little thing going on right now. He got right to the rim and didn't even come close on the layup. It was kind of like me yesterday when we golfed on any hole that had a six in it. The sixth <laughs> hole, the 16th hole, a little bit of the yips. Didn't really, you know, short arming it a little bit, maybe pressing a little bit. Ah, that looked like a little bit of the yips there from Logan Johnson, right? For a guy who's been so great for St. Mary's, so much experience, such a good all-around player, his scoring has blossomed over his career. A little bit of an offensive funk right now. Well, he's not a. What happens is too, he, he struggles from beyond the arc. A 26% three-point shooter. Everybody knows then, lay off of him, try to bait him into taking that shot. What you don't want to do is allow him to get a seam to the rim, and when he does. Give length to him, and if you bring length to the ball, it makes things that much more difficult. Here's Johnson, that three, well short. Bowen there for the offensive rebound, but didn't go up with it. Amazing. The young big man Wessels gave it up. Not a great pass. That's a St. Mary's turnover. And that's why you go up with an offensive rebound when you're right underneath the basket. Got to shoot that. Strother three. No. The other night, Bowen had seven offensive rebounds and didn't score. Figure that one out. Seven offensive rebounds and didn't get one put back, didn't get fouled. Well, he definitely had a chance to go back with that last one. Again, Logan Johnson, good defense, went with the right hand. No. Rebound Watson. Game's kind of slowed down a little bit, though, and that does benefit St. Mary's. The pace of play, the score of this contest, everything's kind of hitting the brakes here just a little bit as we're getting set to close out the first half. Down low, Timmy spins against Wessels, and there's a bucket. Yeah, I I'm going to Timmy every single possession right now. You've got a freshman that hasn't played in this rivalry game, hasn't seen Drew Timmy. You feed him early and you feed him often and let him go right now. And out tied for second on the all-time Gonzaga scoring list. Hey, Marys needs offense from this guy. Aiden Mahaney has been shut out so far. There's his first basket. If the perimeter shot's not falling, look to attack. Mahaney knows what he has to do to find himself in a rhythm. Such a good young player. Grew up in the neighborhood. Went to high school a couple miles down the road. Now Strother. Tough shot. Rebound Dukas. Mahaney, three, in and out. Wessels, the big man, what a rebound. He got pushed. Well, his size has been a factor. The fans thought that basket counted, but the whistle came well before. Ugly in this first half, hanging around, maybe get a little closer before halftime. Yeah, if you could get this down to about four point, six point lead, you feel a little bit better about where you're at considering how poor you shot the ball here in the first half. And I think that's going to go. In a way, I, I'm surprised it's staying this way. Here's the, here's the other key note. Seven offensive rebounds here in the first half and only two second chance points. Against San Francisco, they had a 22-8 to eight advantage on second chance points. 
grabbing 16 offensive rebounds. This is a great rebounding team for St. Mary's, but first shot defense has been really good, as Coach Crane was talking about it. First shot defense has been good by Gonzaga tonight. You've got to make them pay on, your, on second shots. Well, Mahaney just a few moments ago got his first basket. They left him open, and he missed the three. Now, those are the shots that have gone down for him over and over again. He is 0 for 4 from 3, 1 7 from the field this evening. I mean, St. Mary's is not going to win this game if some of those, and maybe even a lot of them, don't start going down. Now, we've seen him, though, put up big halves. 15 points, 17 points and a half, but he's got to figure it out. Hickman goes all the way, tried to wrap it up and under. Now that's the size of the freshman. Harry Wessels is just a monstrous dude out there. Didn't have to do anything but stand there. Alex Duke is not being real aggressive himself on offense. Double team came. Dukas spinning around shot blocked by both Salas and Timmy. That is sensational defense on that possession. And they call the blocking foul against Aiden Mahaney. Hunter Salas had his head down and he was going no matter what. Uh, the defense at the other end of the floor though. I mean just the awareness and look at the rotation to help from Drew Timmy there. I mean, he, Salas left his feet and recovered to block the shot. Part of the reason why he could get back and block the shot is because he was stopped because Drew Timmy helped over and shook. That has been called a charge all year long, by yeah. the way. Uh, that, that looked like a charge to me. But Hunter Salas being super aggressive here. Yeah. And the reason why it's a charge, Salas extended out his elbow. They got to find something here at the offensive end, though. I mean, you got to be able to score some points against the Zags if you want to pull the upset off. Russell's down low over top. Timmy, yes, with a foul. It hung up there forever. It's just like you and I talked about before the game. When St. Mary's really needs a bucket, Harry <laughs> Wessels is the guy. <laughs> oh, what an accomplished career he had. A member of the Australian U-19 national team where he helped them in the FIBA World Games. Yeah, he's, he played coming up, growing up in the same system as Kyle Bowen and Alex Dukas. That pipeline that has been so good for Randy Bennett and a big bucket right there for the Gales. So now, under a minute to go, first half. Very intense, just as always with these two teams. Not always pretty. Malachi Smith kind of out of control. Found Watson, who got fouled. Logan Johnson called for the reach in. Well, one of the things that the Zags have done is they've gotten to the free throw line. Uh, St. Mary's has only attempted one free throw here in the first half. It's a team that doesn't get to the free throw line very frequently. But in what we anticipate being having a very close game, getting to the free throw line, gaining some points there. Well, Watson found a way to get that one to go down. Well, we got NBA tomorrow. Joel Embiid is playing like an MVP these days. He's inside Madison Square Garden. He and the Sixers taking on the Knicks. Six Eastern tomorrow on ESPN and the app. Second free throw for Anton Watson. He made them both. So you're right. The free throw line has been a, a big difference in this first half. Mitchell Saxon in off the bench with his two fouls, at least for the offensive side of this. Marshallonis goes all the way. Got knocked to the floor. Kyle Bowen finds Dukas. Tough contested three, and it goes out of bounds off of St. Mary's. More good defense from the Zags. Well, and that's been a problem area all season long for them, right? I mean, every time we talk about the Zags, and you hear people talking about when they were the case, you look at the final shot, it's got to be yours. The lineup on the floor, you're going to start the ball Malachi Smith, but it's going to end up either Bolton 
or Timmy's hands. And it is interesting. Saxon with his two fouls, not Wessel. Saxon is in to play defense for St. Mary's. Timmy set the screen. Smith bricked it. Rebound Gales and the heave at the horn will sail over the backboard. Halftime is here and Gonzaga is going to take an eight point lead into the locker room. I think if you're St. Mary's, you got to feel pretty good the fact that you've kept this under double digits. If you're Mark Few, you're establishing and reestablish him coming out of the break here. Get the ball in his hand. And for St. Mary's, I mean, look, Zag's defense was really solid. They need their shooters to start making shots. Well, they had some open looks, too. I mean, Logan Johnson missed a three-pointer by five feet. Aiden Mahaney had a couple go around the rim and out. But when you look at Dukas, Mahaney, and Johnson combined, four of 22 shooting in the first half. This St. Mary's team is not going to beat very many teams with those kind of numbers. Johnson on the attack. Logan Johnson passed it away. Shot clock. Almost all the way down. Johnson flips it up and in. Well, this building would like to explode, but it's going to only come if, if this offense can start to string together consecutive makes. Milestone night for Drew Timmy. Logan Johnson has gone over a thousand career points tonight. Alex Dukas called for a foul right away. So Dukas, who. Had one in the first, now has two for the game. St. Mary's got into some foul trouble in the first half. We're really not used to saying that. One thing the Zags and the Gales typically both do well is defend without fouling. Well, that's because the, who's the aggressor? It's been the team in black. I mean, they have been on attack mode from the start of this game and looking to get deep in the paint, and that forces your defensive clap. You start reaching, lunging, getting out of position, and start chasing a little bit. That's when you foul. John Watson against Bowen. Ball poked away. Number 20 in red's got to have a big second half. His shot, I don't know if it was deflected or not, but it went off the side of the backboard. But he's got to start making some shots. He's had, he's had six or seven halves where he scored more than 15 points. They need another one of those tonight. Timmy flipped it up. No. Now maybe two on one. Dukas open. Three. Too strong. Another good look that doesn't go down. Timmy against Saxon. That's going to be a foul on the ground. Does it count? They're going to count it. Count the basket. Well, the help came too late there. I mean, once Drew Timmy, if you're going to commit to wanting to bring multiple players to the ball, you've got to go and you've got to try to make him pass out of this. Watch the patience and poise. Drew Timmy has elite level football, footwork, but he also has patience. And he, he reads and looks and surveys the defense. And if you're late bringing help, and he's got room to turn over that left shoulder and get in the paint. He's going to make it pay. And that's Mahaney. The free throw no good. That's his third foul. Johnson goes baseline. They'll call the foul on the shot. So Logan Johnson will go to the free throw line. So Logan Johnson coming out aggressive here to start the second half. He turned the corner the first time, getting to his strong hand, the left hand. Get to the rim. That time, a quick rip and go. And, and let's not understate the significance of this game. You mentioned it off the top, the way the standings are right now. St. Mary's undefeated. Gonzaga looking up to the Gales. A win here puts you two games up with just a couple of weeks left before you get to Las Vegas. And a lot of the, the games that you would circle as the toughest for St. Mary's are already in the rearview mirror. Gonzaga's got a streak of 10 straight West Coast Conference championships, and that is very much on the line. A win here would be a massive step for Gonzaga into keeping that streak going. 
One of two free throws for Johnson. Straw the three. Short. And the rebound tapped around. Mitchell Saxon. They comes away with the ball. Closed out to Strother and came back and re-engaged to chase down that rebound. It's what makes them such a good rebounding team. They do it collectively. Mahaney got kind of knocked off balance, and the loose ball comes to the Zags. St. Mary's did get back on defense, but the tough night continues for Aiden Mahaney. Not scoring and turning the ball over. Bowen now defending Timmy, and offensive foul. He baited him into it. He baited him into it. I mean, that's Kyle Bowen and his experience. If you look at his defensive efficiency numbers, he's one of the best in the country when he's defending on ball, and he baited Drew Timmy there. The f well, what it was was he absorbed the first contact, and when he re-engaged with the second contact, that's what's going to draw the offensive foul. If, if Bowen goes down on the first one, that's not a foul on Drew Timmy. Mitchell Saxon, who got into foul trouble in the first half, but was off to a good start. Bad pass stolen by Hickman. Another St. Mary's turnover. Here's Timmy. Little shot fake, and he finishes. We've talked to Drew Timmy a couple of times, and he goes back to that game in this building a year ago, and it stings for him still because these are the games you remember. Uh, and he did not play well. He's certainly having a good performance so far this evening. Yes, he is. Meanwhile, St. Mary's offense really struggling. Dukas, three. Good. That's a big shot. Even with that one, St. Mary's 3 of 15 from outside the yard. Spin move, Timmy scores again. The footwork around the basket, unparalleled in college hoops. The composure and the emotion in which he plays with two. I mean, you just understand the significance of this game. We saw it with Carolina Duke. Earlier today, wow, that was a great catch by Saxon, not a great pass, and then he draws the foul. Well, if St. Mary's wants to figure out how they're going to win this game, it's 20 wins. Their non conference schedule was one of the most difficult in all the country, if not the most difficult. And now, look, you lose a game in conference play to LMU at home, and I think everybody kind of sits there and goes, wait. That doesn't happen. You know why? Because it hasn't happened. It was the first home loss that Drew Timmy has ever experienced in conference play at home. Now, this year is a little bit different. They haven't been nearly as dominant. You look at the scoring margin and how they've been able to blow out teams. But part of that, again, is the scheduling. The other part of it is this conference has started to make a commitment to wanting to win. Really good league this year. Are the Zags as good as last year's version? No. no. But are they good? Yes. We're looking around college basketball. We had four teams in the top ten loose today. Including number one. I mean, it's been a little bit of a revolving door. We don't have a great team. A couple weeks ago, we were like, Alabama's the best team. Then they, they, then they take a loss. Like Houston, and they lose to Temple. It's just college basketball this year. Saxon missed Mahaney. He was open under the bucket. Couldn't get it to him. I'm so okay now. with that, though, because if it's a turnover, it's an empty possession. Duke is three. Good! He's hit another one. Dave, that's why I'm okay with it. Lead is down to three. Strother fell down. Here's Johnson. Layup. No! He missed it. He rushed it. This place would have exploded, would have made it a one-point game. They're going to get this ball back to Drew Timmy here. There he is, working his way closer. Shot no. But they did a better job walling up. They kept him at the logo. They brought help early that time.
Well, Dukas is starting to feel it. He's got the ball here. He'll shoot it over top Timmy off to the side and the ball will carry him out of bounds. Kyle Bowen leaps over the bench. We go back to that last possession though. Watch where Mitchell Saxon is e able to hold his feet. He didn't allow him to get too deep. Mahaney comes in. He starts reaching in. He doesn't get a clean look that time. If you allow him to get inside that halo, which is that little half, half circle that they have on the floor, Drew Timmy gets two feet, one feet, and there, you're dead. Strother down the lane. He got cut off. And the ball goes out of bounds off of St. Mary's. Dale's thought it should be their ball. Well, Julian Strother has been sped up here a little bit. He has not been comfortable with the ball in his hands the last two possessions. That comes with your base. You got to keep your feet underneath you. Make sure your jump stop on balance when you're going to pick the ball up. Well, a little bit of a drought here for the Zags offense. Malachi Smith, a little floater is good. Beautiful touch there. Dukas had it knocked away. Rajir Bolton out in transition. And Logan Johnson called for the reach in. That'll be his third foul. The Gales usually do such a good job taking care of the ball. And if you're Alex Dukas, you're just trying, you're feeling it from the outside. Understand the rhythm of those shots and how they came to you. You start forcing it a little bit. You start doing things uncharacteristic, trying to take it off the bounce. You let the ball get away from your body. And Logan Johnson thought that one was clean. Yeah. I think even Rajir Bolton, he looked right at our camera. I think he knew. And Bolton makes the first free throw. Well, big Monday doubleheader, Duke and number 23, Miami, 7 Eastern, then top 10 matchup at Fog Allen, Texas. Off a great week against Kansas. The Jayhawks got pounded today, so they'll be looking to bounce back. Both games are on ESPN and the app on Monday. Well, Kansas, one of those teams we thought was the best team in the country, and they've taken some losses here. They lost three in a row. They got a win. Take another loss today. Iowa State, T.J. Otzenberger, what a job he has done with that program. Maybe USA Today will write a piece about Kansas. <laughs> Saxon down low got fouled by Ben Gregg, who just came in. Drew Timmy getting a rare rest. Look, and, and I get the, uh, the thought process, right? When you're, when, and, and, and the reason why that piece is written, by the way, is because there is a standard. Like, Gonzaga has been number one in the country. Gonzaga goes undefeated into the national championship game before losing to Baylor. Gonzaga has number one draft picks, you know, top-tier lottery picks like Jalen Suggs and Chet Holmgren. And you start you start looking at things and going, what, is it the same? And when it's not the same, you can point some things out that show there's a difference. But the point also is that th that's college basketball this year. Who's the same as they were? Who's the team that's been ultra consistent throughout the course of the year this year? And Tennessee won a game today. They shot, I think, 15% from the field. That's an exaggeration, but, but not by much. Close. <laughs> well, Zag's trying to clamp down here on defense again. Ben Gregg, back-to-back -back fouls called against him. And Mitchell Saxon wants to make another move. Logan Johnson. Just having a hard time. Mahaney, three. A brick. Saxon offensive rebound, and he gets fouled again. The rebounding numbers starting to really go in the favor of St. Mary's. You know, they, they are plus eight on the boards right now, which is about their season average, but they've been able to do it on the offensive glass. They've got to be able to find a way to score when they get their second chance points. And Randy Bennett wants to talk it, talk it over because sometimes in a game like this, how you execute in an out of bounds underneath, even in a moment with 12 minutes left to go, can help manufacture a win.
Thorne, and, you know, what made him so unique was that he was the champion on the court, but he was really a champion off the court. I mean, giving a voice to issues that people were uncomfortable talking about and not being afraid to do so. One of the first athletes to really use his voice to bring awareness to social issues that needed to be addressed. Out of the timeout, St. Mary's ball. Logan Johnson, Hunter Salas, that's an offensive foul. So the Gales turn it over again, and that sends us to another timeout. Gonzaga's defense is playing so well. That's the fourth against Logan. The first of John Shire as the head coach and able to get that victory. And we mentioned that Tennessee game. He shot 27%. Virginia, who, who was such a good, has played so well throughout the course of the season. And we talk about their defense. How about the fact that Virginia Tech shot 51%. Call a foul, Nolan Hickman driving to the basket. You shoot 51% against Tony Bennett's team. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. And dropped 74 points. Nice win for them. That's the third personal against Mitchell Saxon. We just saw Logan Johnson pick up his fourth before the timeout. He's on the bench. So Saxon's got three. Aiden Mahaney's got three. As Randy Bennett said, he's going to let his guys play. We got to kind of balance it out. You can't have everybody foul out of the contest. And the Gales hit the three to cut the lead to three, and they haven't scored since. Gonzaga's defense continues to just stifle St. Mary's tonight. And the ability to get to the free throw line. You know, St. Mary's has got four free throws here in the second half, which is three more than they had in the first half. But they're minus six from the free throw line as far as points from the free throw line in this game. And St. Mary's just has to get number 20 going. Hey, Mahaney. Well, he's not. I mean, the defense has been sensational on him. Marshallona is kind of a step through, and then he got knocked off balance. Ben Gregg came over. And fouled him. Well, that'll be Greg's third personal foul. And they've well, all come in the last few minutes. Uh, you know, here's one of the things you and I have talked about over the last couple of weeks. We've had St. Mary's a couple of times. Is Logan Johnson's been great, but one of the big reasons why St. Mary's has had success is because Marshall Onis at the free throw line. He values the basketball, hasn't turned it over. He's picked up his scoring back to back 10 plus point games. You know, and that was a simple move. He didn't overcomplicate it, didn't try to do too much. He's really grown in his understanding of this role being a backup guard this year, and he's going to be the starter next year. But really a lot of growth out of him this year, and he's going to need to play well down the stretch of this game. Makes them both. Augustus Marshallone's dad was a great player. I love watching him growing up. I yeah. grew up in this area. I used to go to Oakland Coliseum and watch him. Hickman again. Almost traveled, and... They called a foul. Wow. That was a travel. I, I thought he picked up his pivot foot before there was contact. Is that on Saxon? That's his fourth. Hey, you watch this. I mean, that was definitely a travel, wasn't it? And it wasn't on Saxon either. No. I mean, they got the wrong guy for the foul, and they missed the travel. I don't, I, okay, it wasn't on Saxon. They called it on Mahaney. I thought it was on Marshallonis. So what do I know? And Mahaney goes to the bench with four fouls. Salas lost the ball. Here's Marshall Onis. Dukas, extra pass. Logan Johnson, they're not even guarding him. He's going to go to the bucket. Timmy got the block. One play by Timmy. And here's the problem. You make the extra pass, which is the right play, but you're passing it to somebody that is not comfortable at shooting the three-point shot, nor are they efficient at doing so. So you're taking a good shot and turning it into a poor shot. Timmy scores! What a move by Drew Timmy. When you do that enough against Gonzaga, they make you pay at the other end of the floor. Johnson on the attack again. Stopped. Finds Bowen. He passes up the shot. Dukas back to Johnson. 
I mean, nobody for St. Mary's. So many of their players right now just don't want to shoot the ball. You got to be shot ready on the catch, and you have to be ready to take the good shot when it's available because you're allowing the rotations to disrupt you. And Logan Johnson didn't even look to shoot the ball. Then he drives, and he actually actually exposes the ball back to Drew Timmy and allows him to knock that shot away and then the offensive end as we've seen throughout the course of his career elite level footwork understanding of where the defense is utilizing their positioning against them to create the angle to finish front end of a one and one is good for Logan Johnson one more field goal to tie the great Frank Burgess for most field goals made in a Gonzaga career think about all the great players they've had one of them sitting across the court from us right now, and Adam Morrison. So Logan Johnson makes them both. His battle with J.J. Redick for National Player of the Year was one of the best races we've, we've had in a long time. Anton Watson, he almost traveled. Tough backdoor pass out of bounds off of Strawberry. <laughs> St. Mary's has gone through another one of these funks on offense as they get the court wiped up. Five minutes without a shot made from the field. Five minutes. Yeah, we've seen that over and over again. I mean, it's the first question I asked Randy Bennett today after shoot around. How do you avoid the droughts? You know, when you, pace of play is one thing, but avoiding the droughts within that, your efficiency with how you play becomes a lot more important when you limit possessions. Bowen, wide open. Three, no. A foul on the three. So Watson committed the foul. And they say after the shot, so not a shooting foul. He walked into him and pushed him into the bench, I guess. So this is a one and one, not three shots. Yeah. And, and St. Mary's players, and, and here's the thing. All right, fine. You're saying it's after the shot. Everybody's got their arms out. They're looking at the officials. Randy's looking at the officials. Kyle Bowles and Kyle, you got to focus on yeah. making the first here. Totally agree. And he didn't. They, it, it, you allow things that your uncontrollables to impact your mental preparation, your rhythm, your focus. It takes you away. You miss shots like that. Wait, when has an official ever been like, okay, you're right, I'll give you three free <laughs> Well, Timmy's being guarded right now by Augustus Marcellonis. They haven't gotten him in the ball yet. Shot clock starting to wind down. And Smith found the ball from Hickman. What a great bounce pass. Well, great movement without the ball by Smith to vacate the strong side on the drive. And Hickman jump stops on balance in a small window and delivers a good one. Big time basket with the shot clock winding down. Here's Saxon down low. Saxon makes his move, and they call the foul against Timmy. Great job late in the shot clock running down. Watch, you see how Logan Johnson steps up. Smith goes to the opposite side, hides under the paint as Drew Timmy's posting. There's nobody on him in a beautiful wraparound. So double bonus now for the Gales for the rest of the game. Saxon. Well, now you got to you can you're the same areas. You really can slow this game down. Yeah. Get to the free throw line. You, you can't score on the half court. You struggle all night long doing that. Drew Timmy just checked out of the game here. Good job by Mark Few to try to buy him these 35 seconds and then the under eight media timeout to get him some rest to try to keep him fresh down the stretch. So both free throws good for Mitchell Saxon. Harry Wessels will give him a blow. Mitchell Saxon's playing well tonight. Yeah. But could have been an N1. Yep. Instead of going to the free throw line, he could have made an N1 and.
Here we go, Cody. And despite all of it, St. Mary's is in this game. Timmy on the bench. Smith sort of slipped. Hickman. And they'll call Bowen for the bump. A long way for the basket. Kyle Bowen called for the personal. His third. Well, Bowen upset about the foul call, but watch the way he shows out on this. That's a foul. It's a foul. One and one for Smith. Perfect. Well, here's the thing, too. If the officials call it the same way from the start to the finish, you as a player have to adjust. You have to understand how the game is being officiated. Different crews may call different things. Get it. You hope that they don't, and everybody calls it the exact same way every single night. That's not the way it works. And this game, look, have there been some calls that maybe I thought weren't made correctly? Yeah, there always are, but this game has been super physical. And there are going to be some whistles. Bowen. Hesitated. Everybody's hesitating offensively right now for St. Mary's. Yeah. Logan Johnson. Good help from Ben Gregg. Here's Dukas from the corner. The high arcing three with a hand in his face. That was rushed. That entire possession, the ball never even got inside the three-point line. And so it's really allowing Gonzaga to just defend the three-point line, be there on the catch. Somebody's got to get the ball in the paint, shrink the defense, and bring it back out. Offensive foul on Hickman. Seven and a half minutes to go in Moraga. The St. Mary's have a run in them. The Gales are down. Beat San Francisco. This is not San Francisco, though. This is the Gonzaga Bulldogs. You're going to have to make some shots down the stretch. Aiden Mahaney, one of ten. Logan Johnson, two of eleven. They haven't really taken advantage of Drew Timmy being on the bench. He won't stay on the bench much longer. He's going to go to the scorer's table now. Mahaney gets the handoff. Even that is difficult tonight against a swarming Gonzaga defense. Johnson down the lane. Logan Johnson with the right hand. And they got the ball inside the three-point line. Logan Johnson, when he gets in that area, very efficient. Strother goes to the basket. Strother, no. Tip is good from Watson. And Alex Dukas got popped. Uh, no more points. Start making some shots. And, and he did it down the stretch the other night in foul trouble. Able to find ways to create and score. And some of that was attacking off the, off the bounce. But defensively, whether it's been Bolton or it's been Hickman, they've done a really good job of being physical with the freshman. He's got to gain some weight. He's got to gain some strength. But they've been physical with him, and they have not given him a seat. Here's Johnson. Bolton right on top of Mahaney. He'll drive, elevate, score with a foul. This is what I'm talking about. He finally got a seam. He got... Bolton to open up his hips on the drive. He opened up his hips and he gave him that lane and then that forced the contact down low underneath In Mahaney got to see the ball go through the basket. It's been a long time Since he's seen that yeah, just his second made shot of the game. He completes a three-point play It was the fourth foul against Rogier Bolton Six and a half minutes to go five-point lead for Gonzaga Got to bring help early here. Help is coming. Timmy, tough shot, no. They didn't even get to the paint that time. Great job walling up and utilizing the length by Mitchell Saxon. Mahaney 
Johnson down low. Johnson ball goes to Kyle Bowen. Dukas finds Johnson three. Good. Timeout Gonzaga. And 49. Timeout, Gonzaga ball. Timmy's going to look to go from here if he turns and faces. Smith elevated and scored. What tough a shot. shot. That was tough over the length of Mitchell Saxon. Malachi Smith able to turn that corner and shot that one with confidence. He's playing a really solid game. There goes Mahaney again. Flipped it up and in. Jimmy, good position. Johnson knocked it. Oh, wow. Out of bounds. No, they called the foul against him. And that's his fifth. Well, Randy Bennett is fine with rolling the dice for players. And he talked about it. He did it with Mahaney the other night. And part of the reason why is he can be confident because Marshall Onis has played so well. Well, just after making that huge shot, now Logan Johnson is done for the night. Well, and you look at the numbers, 10 points in the second half. And he gets the first free throw. And they've needed all 10. I they mean, have. they have struggled to find ways to score. It, only, it puts more on, on Mahaney. And late games, Mahaney's been as good as anybody in the WCC. And remember, he's got four fouls himself. So if he's out of the game, Sam Marys is really in trouble. Two big free throws for Drew Timmy. As part of the Randy Bennett philosophy, he's willing to stick with his guys, even through foul trouble. Randy thought he was going to maybe take that shot. With the left hand high off the backboard, it's good! Timmy, what a spin move. Left Mitchell Saxon in his wake. So good. His feel and understanding of space. Mahaney looks like a different guy now. Aiden Mahaney, another bucket. He's money, man. Late in games. That's why I call him Money Mahaney. But he has done this over and over and over again this season. Hickman slipped and somehow didn't travel. Timmy lost it. Again, Aiden Mahaney! Incredible. School player recruited by a lot of big time programs. Well, and one of the more highly touted players that Randy Bennett's ever got, ever. By the way, the fans here were just warned for throwing stuff on the floor. Next time it will be a technical. Can't do that. Timmy with the ball. Tie game. Hickman almost lost it. Anton Watson. Back to Hickman. Three. Way short. Wide open. No. Mark Few basically said anybody but Mahaney. He had three guys three guarding guys. him. I might do it again. How about that respect? 
for a player experiencing this rivalry for the very first time. Here goes Julian Strother. Strother scores with Mitchell Saxon right in his face. Dave, I mean, he literally said anybody but Mahaney on the last possession. Will they do it again? And Dukas is wide open. And Mahaney kind of got it to him late. Now he's got Anton Watson on him. Mahaney got cut off. Cock clock down to five. Mahaney, another left oh, hand off the glass. Anton Watson's one of the best defensive players in this conference. Was outstanding in his positioning. And the freshman still delivers. American Timmy against Kyle Bowen matched up with him. Gets it back from Hickman and offensive foul. He pulled the chair. He did. That's four on Timmy. Hey, that is a little iffy on that one. Kyle Bowen gets it. But he pulled the chair. He started falling back before Timmy went into him, so he lost his balance and fell over the top of him. Now St. Mary's wants to use a timeout. They've got the ball. Putting up numbers like Patty Mills did. And Patty Mills, his number's hanging up in the rafters. So, here we go. St. Mary's last led when it was 4-3. to three. They played from behind the whole night. Bowen in the corner. I'll set a screen for Mahaney. They aren't guarding him with the whole team. Three. Short. He missed one. Loose ball. Ben Gregg. And a jump ball with the arrow favoring Gonzaga. So the Zags get the stop. Mahaney had a good look. Good look, but great defense from not allowing him. Pass it down to Drew Timmy on a late ducking. First place in the conference on the line here in early February. St. Mary's trying to make it two straight wins against the Zags on their home court. Strother. Strother goes to the bucket. Another one of those runners. He scores again. So it was Julian Strother. Tiny difference. Game clock, shot clock. No timeout for St. Mary's. They're going to let him play. Mahaney. And St. Mary's will use its final timeout. Yeah, that, that possession wasn't going anywhere. Great job by Julian Strother. Not his best game tonight. He hasn't had the ball a lot in his hands. Hasn't been asked to make a ton of plays. Point lead for the Zags. No timeouts left for either team. All right, here we go. Smith trying to stay with Mahaney. He did a good job of it. Great pass. Saxon lays it in. Tie game. 5.5. Here's Strother. Pull up for the win. No. Just short. That shot went, but they say no. Michael Irving waves it off. I'm sure they'll look to make sure the shot actually went down off the carom. No matter how it ends, we're going to remember for a while. I love calling these games. You and I have done so many of them. We talked about these coaches, the familiarity, these programs, how frequently they play. Zags are going to have the ball first in overtime. And Gonzaga has played really well against a very good team, incredibly hostile environment. Timmy against Saxon. Timmy tried to duck under him. Saxon then fouled him. And I think hey, he did. He brought his arm down. He, he had him in good position, and then he fouled him. That's his fourth. That's just great footwork by Drew Timmy. They spaced out the floor a little bit, gave him some room. Look at the way he's spinning. He steps underneath him. 
And you see that arm come down at the last second. Timmy making his free throws tonight. That's big. He's five of six at the line. He's got 21 to lead everybody. Not that time. And Kyle Bowen went way up to grab the rebound. That's his ninth rebound of the game. Mahaney back over Dukas. Layup good. <laughs> That's their first lead since about two minutes into this game. Amazing. And it comes here in overtime. Hickman. Strother. Catch and shoot three. Too strong. Rebound Saxon. I hope that the sound of this building is coming through your television sets because it's as loud as any gym, any arena you will find in the country. I hope so. It's just deafeningly loud. Marshall Lotus with the left hand. Channeling Aiden Mahaney. Timmy, the pass, and they're going to call a foul. It's not Mahaney, it's Bowen who gets called for the personal. And that is his fourth personal foul. Hey, maybe it goes without saying since St. Mary's last led two minutes into the game, but this is the biggest lead all night for the Gales. <laughs> Randy Bennett unhappy with that last call. This is so much fun that you and I have been on these calls so frequently. We've seen big shots. And the, the players change in this rivalry, but the intensity never changes. It doesn't matter. It feels like the most important game on the planet right here, right now. Timmy, another free throw make. That one good. So two at the line for Timmy. The lead for St. Mary's back down to one. Mahaney, three. Bank it in! There goes Timmy against Bowen, who did not commit the foul. Shot clock under 10. Another screen from Saxon. Mahaney finds him. Layup. Good. Aiden Mahaney's that dude. He's, he's taking over the game. He's that guy. And I've been saying this the last couple weeks. He's going to be a pro. He's going to play. Now the kid who stayed home to play a mile from his high school campus has made an immediate impact on this rivalry. 16 since halftime. After a two-point first half. Drags ball. Timmy against Bowen. Timmy. That one no good. And then Saxon got fouled, I think. Maybe Dukas got fouled under the basket first. Called the foul against Watson. So that means Mitchell Saxon is going to be the guy to go to the free throw line. 
You know, we, we talked about St. Mary's throughout the course of the season, and we were questioning even during Gonzaga games why they're not nationally ranked. Why aren't they nationally ranked? Why don't they get the respect? Tonight's are about respect for this team and what Randy Bennett has done this year. If they're able to hold on here in the final two minutes and 14 seconds, this will be the signature win that I think most of the nation's going, okay, we see the net rankings at six. See all the metrics love you. We know you defend. Can you knock off the Zags? And you look at what these two coaches, these two programs have done in the last decade. These are the winningest programs in college basketball. Uh, they, they are elite. Saxon made just one. The Zags still have a shot here. There's still 2.10 to go. And it's not like we're in the final seconds. The Zaga cannot afford empty possessions, though. Marcellona's poked it away, and now they're going to call a foul. That's going to foul Mitchell Saxon out of the game. His third straight triple double, 15 and 11. But that's going to be the foul that gets him out of the game. And I understand why you have to call it, but I hate those fouls where players are just diving for a loose ball, and that's what gets the whistle. But Mitchell Saxon, second St. Mary's player to be disqualified now. Well, and then that, you're going to go back to Joshua Jefferson, the freshman. He'll check in and hit the big three in the first half in the corner. Huge ovation for Saxon. He earned it. That's one of the best games he's ever played. It really is. Because you have to consider who he's guarding, who he's playing against. But this is the last thing you want for Randy Bennett, though, to stop the clock and allow the Gonzaga Bulldogs to go to the free throw line. But Strother misses the first of two. Worth noting again, a win by St. Mary's puts Gonzaga two games back of the Gales. He missed them both. Those ads are not fouling. St. Mary's needs to work as much clock as they can. Here goes Aiden Mahaney. Shot clock down to five. Mahaney, crossover, three. Too strong. Timmy rebound. Zag's got to go. Under a minute and a half to play. Hickman gave it up. He gets it back. Three. Good! And that keeps the Zags in the game. This one's not over. The Zag is still not fouling. Markview wants his team to cheat towards the ball. They want them stepping up here. Make sure they're pressuring. Watson slipped as he went for the steal. Marshallonis now the guy with the ball. Goes behind the back and had it poked away by Bolton. Here comes Gonzaga. Hickman, reverse. No! And Hickman got hurt. Oh, no. Nolan Hickman is down and his right foot landed awkwardly. Foul. You can trap right away to try to see if you can create a turnover. That would be most ideal. But if you're St. Mary's, you've got to be firm with the basketball. Make sure you don't turn it over. Marcellonis gets fouled by Strawber. St. Mary's 11 of 15 from the free throw line on the game. 14 of those have come in the second half. Well, you pointed it out in the first half. There was a big differential. Gonzaga was the team getting to the line. Allen goes down. And Marys makes their free throws now. They're going to be hard to beat. Marshall Lone, as we mentioned, Logan Johnson goes to the bench. He fouls out of the game. And I said, you know, St. Mary's isn't going to worry too much because Marshall Lonis has been that good. And he has come up huge here in the overtime. He has. Here goes Strother, and he slipped and fell. Here's Dukas, and he had it stripped by Bolton. What a play by Rajir Bolton.
as Dukas was going up to dunk it. Twenty-two to shoot. Twenty-six point six. Zags have to foul. St. Mary's had the one timeout and they used. So St. Mary's has the ball. Now they don't have any more timeouts, so they got to be able to get it in. And if the Zags can't steal it away, then Gonzaga's going to have to foul and hope the Gales miss some shots at the line. Jimmy with his four fouls for the moment. Sitting on the bench. St. Mary's, well, they had a hard time getting it in. It ricocheted off the leg of Malachi Smith. The defense on out of bounds underneath has been really good for Gonzaga. They're communicating better. They're fighting through. Can they get the deflection? Can they get the steal here to make it a one possession game? The second year in a row is becoming a tradition when we come to this gym where you and I are We're having to get ready for a stampede There's Last no place year. in the country where the students are closer to us Well, you had a you had a broken elbow last year and our table went like four feet out on the floor I'll protect you again this year. Partner. I can defend myself this time huh. at least some Dukas catches the ball and Julian Strother commits the foul. So Alex Dukas goes to the line. And we don't have Molly McGrath with us. She was here in the midst of all of the chaos. I'm sure she's watching. Everybody's watching these free throws, though, right here. Dukas makes the first of two. Yeah, they know now, Gales fans. There's been a party all game, but big party's about to start. In a year of inconsistency, this St. Mary's team has been ultra consistent. Had to dig deep tonight. Smith, three. Good! Well, 18.5 again. Game's not over. Outlet. Bowen will dunk it home. Now it is. Yeah, and now the steal from Marshall Otis. He'll get fouled. Randy Bennett got 500 just the other night. I think he's much more excited about 501 tonight. The Gales will have a two-game lead on the Gonzaga Bulldogs. It's huge. That doesn't mean it's over, but this win will put St. Mary's firmly in control. And Gonzaga's streak of 10 straight West Coast Conference championships is in jeopardy now. Missed free throw there. Impressive. Strother poked away. 5.6 seconds until Bedlam. What makes this so impressive is how poorly the Gales played, but yet because they stayed true to who they were, because they trusted their defense, because they trusted their guy Aiden Mahaney to play through the misses, they're going to reap the benefits of it and get this win. Rebound tapped out. Horn sounds. What a win for St. Mary's. This will be one of the most electric environments you see all day long, and that includes the game that took place in North Carolina. Man, are they ready to go here? And Drew Timmy and the Zags win the opening tip. So Gonzaga has the ball first tonight. 
The Zags are having a really good year, but St. Mary's has one of its best teams in a long time. The freshman Aiden Mahaney has been a huge difference maker for the Gales. Rashir left his feet, and the ball gets knocked to Anton Watson, knocked away, and now Logan Johnson steals it from Timmy. Great bounce pass, and Dickens has the first bucket of the night. to do a lot of talking this evening. That'll be a gift to all of America. Timmy will take the jumper. That one's no good. Dave, one of the things they do so well at St. Mary's, they force you to take tough shots. They, they do a great job swarming the post. We've seen that even against BYU. Getting deflections. And then this year, they're running more off of those deflections than they have in the past. Very deliberate offensively. That was a good play by Anton Watson. He slapped the ball away. Julian Strother with a foul lays it in. We do welcome those of you just joining us from Lexington and Kentucky. A very charged atmosphere here in Moraga for a great rivalry game and an intense first minute plus Julian Strauss.